Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. So, the video now is going to be on this 2013 Citroën Berlingo HDI 90 with the 1.6 diesel engine. Uh, the problem with this is comes with the fans running full speed all the time and an engine light on. And I've also noticed a uh, orange triangle. But we're gonna get it started. The only thing is it gets really noisy, this thing. But we're gonna get it started and I will show you exactly what it does. I believe the fans running at full speed is due to the fault. Pedios tend to do that. So let me just show you. There we go. So engine light, yellow triangle with the exclamation mark. And there it is. Fans running at full speed. So let's gonna get the Maxi Sys, give a quick scan, and see what the car is not happy with. Okay, and we're gonna do it here. I do apologize for the noise. I could go and disconnect the fans, but uh, it's on charge because it was pretty much flat. So we'll do it here. So let's scan the car and uh, see what we have. Yeah, whatever. Ah, oh, I don't even know what I pressed. Actually, I pressed the right one. <laughs> right, so. And the trouble codes are. Okay. Wow. Ooh, particle filter. <laughs> so, we have. Wow, what the hell happened to this? So, a lot of intermittent faults, and then we have a. Alternator. Okay, so quite self-explanatory. Let's gonna do a little bit of uh, some inspections, and uh, actually, let me do something here quickly. Yep, 100%. Zero. Difference pressure, practice four millibars. That's not too bad, actually. Four millibars is actually not too bad. Could it be that the car just reached the point where the, the ECU is the plant obsolete? obsolescence, isn't it? Uh, where the manufacturers just put a thing, even if the DPF is good, they will just put a counter on ECU that will obviously uh, make the car to think um, the DPF is gone when it's actually not. And the, 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 the truth is, the pressure is not bad. Four millibars, it's not too bad really. So, hmm, let me think what we're gonna do. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is open that bonnet and do a good inspection to the car. So I don't want to get in there because it gets really noisy, but uh, everything looks pretty much okay. It's the standard 1.6 diesel from PSA. That you guys all know about it. Everything looks okay. There's a little bit of an oil um, a leakage, if you will, at the top of the intercooler. But it doesn't look like nothing major. Maybe it might be a leak in there somewhere. But other than that, it looks okay. Uh, DPF pressure sensor is there. Is the original pressure sensor. I can't see any concerns in there. So I came here just quickly to see my fuel additive pump. 
I want to see if there's any codes. I already did it, but I'll do it for the video. So there is no codes on the fuel additive pump. I'm gonna guess it's one of those pumps I already showed you uh, back in uh, another videos that leaves at the back somewhere underneath the car. Uh, and when you go to live data, you actually can see that still 24% of additive left, um, which means 250 milliliters and the tank is a one liter tank so it's about a quarter full if you will so i have no concerns here so i think i'm going to try to actually um reset the dpf go for a drive see if the car regens or maybe try a forced regeneration and um, see what happens uh, i want to understand if the dpf really needs replacing or if this as i said is just a plant obsolete obsolete i don't know if that's the word is is an obsolete man i don't have the words today so is is the counter in the issue that tells the the car it doesn't matter how many miles it did it just tells you at that point the the dpf is bad regardless of the actual status of the dpf so we're going to do that and then i will i guess i will report back and once you do that as you can see all of this goes down to zeros and it tells you 180 thousand kilometers before the replacement so actually let me see how many miles this car has so the car has ended in 2500 miles which is about 165,000 kilometers so it won't surprise me if with the drive conditions etc the issue just thought that EPF had its days so now we're gonna go back and try to clear these codes See if we can stop those fans from running. Uh, they're really annoying. Okay, mileage is hundred and two four eight two, I think. Something like that. Oh, that's in kilometers, doesn't really matter. Okay, that's gonna turn the ignition off. Turn it back on. We are left with that fault which looks like we're gonna have to look at it so hopefully now when I start the car these fans should stop I'm hoping there we go so there we go so no more fans running full speed or anything like that let's just uh, confirm that I still have good pressures on my DPF those four or five millibars that was absolutely perfect and we're gonna in, in Really? Uh, unless it's because of that. Oh man. Really? What the heck's going on? Electric cooling fan unit twin speed inconsistent between the cooling fan status and the setting slow speed. So it looks like we have two faults. <laughs> right um but this video guys is going to be purely for the first one for the dpf i'm not going to mix this so what i want to do next obviously is again go into my live data i need to pick up my youngest one from school there you go four millibars that's to me sounds really good um we're gonna go quickly for a test drive uh, in a bit um, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, but I have no concerns about this so inactive yes okay zero yeah of course average distance between the last 500 not too bad yeah that's fine not reached yet beautiful Looks like we are. Looks like we had an easy one. So, as I said, let's gonna go for drive. 
and see what happens. So far, so good as you can see. There is no concerns whatsoever. The car, the Berlingo, <laughs> is driving absolutely perfect. And in the meantime, I googled it to make sure I'm gonna say this correctly. It's called plant obsolence, which is basically when manufacturers, not just on cars, on many other things, when they plan things to either fail or to either have to be replaced, even if they are in fully work condition, it's just a way for manufacturers to make money. That's the main, the main thing. Um, and this is exactly that. Uh, in my opinion, it's not just uh, Peugeot or uh, Citroën or Peugeot, whatever, that does it. BMW does the same. I actually reset uh, DPF on an X3 the other day <coughs> uh, for a friend, uh, which was uh, actually saying, was not throwing any warnings yet, but was saying the DPF life was coming to an end. Uh, did the same as I did now, checked everything, everything looked uh, within specifications, within the correct parameters, just reset the DPF and off you go. So, but this is, is exactly that, is manufacturers planning for things to, to for, the, for the end of life of certain components, regardless of their status. Obviously, um, we checked, uh, as I've showed, I'm gonna show you, I have some live data here to show you. Um, that the car is driving absolutely perfect, uh, pulls okay, there is no problems at all, no warnings. Actually, let me stop here while we are here. It's not a uh, too bad place, I'm coming like this, so we're not in the middle of the road, though we are in the middle of nowhere nearly. <laughs> right, well, let me show you some live data that I have here. Okay, so, as you can see, I've recorded a little bit of live data, and as you can see there, the highest pressure I had so far was there. So green line is my DPF pressure, blue line is my RPMs. And as you can see, I had in there a peak of 93 millibars on my uh, DPF at 3,500 or just above 3,500 RPMs. Obviously the pressure is gonna increase with RPMs, but it didn't even reach 100 millibars. And if I press play, you're gonna see that we're gonna come back the car obviously is idling and if I press resume you're gonna see look at that that's absolutely perfect I have no concern sometimes you fluctuate a little bit to like three four as you've seen at the start look there we go but look I, I have no concerns with this DPF whatsoever so I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna drive for a little bit longer uh, just to make sure obviously the car is not asking for any um, regenerations as you can see so obviously with these pressures obviously it's not gonna so I drove for seven kilometers so far since I left home and um, obviously not gonna ask for it I was considering while I was driving around uh, I was considering force a regeneration but I don't see the point to put the DPF through the stress of a regeneration when there's no need. Obviously, guys, if, I, if it was my car, I could either monitor or I could drive it for a few more days and see what happens. But uh, look, it's not mine. So what I'm going to do is just tell the owner you can drive it. And if any concerns, let me know. Uh, but based on what I'm seeing here, I have no concerns whatsoever. So let's going to drive back home now and uh, wrap up the video for this. And as you guys have seen, there's another two issues or at least one, maybe two, that, that we need to resolve on this, but that's gonna be obviously for a, another video. And here we are back home looks okay I have no concerns whatsoever so that's it for this video rather simple I should get more more videos like this more uh, cars like this <laughs> right guys so with no further ado um, I really hope you enjoyed the video um, who knows you might learn something might be some information here 
that you guys can find useful. Uh, if you do still have any questions or any comments, you know exactly how it works. Put them below. And like always, thank you for watching.